Um, my name's Joanne and I'm 43. And what was your childhood like? What was life like growing up? Um, well, I got adopted when I was um, five and um, I didn't have a good childhood and I got put in children's homes when I was about 11 and then I ended up coming to Manchester when I was like 17 when I come out of jail and then I ended up um, being a working girl and I've been a working girl since then. What made you go to jail, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I'd done a sheet robbery when I was young. So would you say, did you sort of fall into the wrong crowd? Yeah, from a young age, really, I did. And what do you think caused, like, why do you think that? Just because... I don't think I had any um, no proper, like, um, stability or... Years ago, in kids' homes, now there's a lot more, like, uh, they're a lot stricter, aren't they, and there's a lot more people watching over them, but years ago, they just used to feed you and let you run wild, so... Mm. Yeah. That sounds tough growing I up. I know, it was. Yeah. And so you started working when you were 17? So. Yeah. I used to work for a guy at first. He used to tell me what I had to make and he got me in. Um, I'd had crack before that when I was a bit younger, but he um, got me into heroin. I didn't really know that you can get addicted to it and it used to make you feel ill. Mm. And then before I knew it, I didn't have it. And um, he used to tell me how much money I had to make and basically, I suppose he did force me in a way to go out because I was pretty scared of him. But when I managed to get away from him, I still carried on doing it because I had um, an addiction on drugs and it was the only way I knew to make money. Yeah. Yeah. So how old were you when you first tried crack? About 14 in London. Mm. When I ran away from the kids' home, yeah. And did you know what you were getting into when you tried it? Did you know much about it? Or? Not really, no, because I was trying every drug, really, just to get yeah. high, really. I didn't really care, I suppose. And was that to, like, escape from everything? I suppose, in a way, yeah. But I didn't take it all the time then. It wasn't until um, I come to Manchester and then I've been on it. Well, I've had a little break off it and that, but other than that, I've mm. been on it since. It's quite hard to get out of once you get into it. I can imagine, yeah. It's not just the addiction, it's the lifestyle as well, everything that goes with it. Is it hard? Well, it can be quite addictive even doing this because you can come out and make money 24 hours a day. Yeah. It's not easy, it's not an easy job what we do, but um, because I can come out any time of the day and I can make money, I don't know if it's an addictive, I'd say, the job. I don't really enjoy doing my job, but um, I suppose it can be addictive in a way, if you know what I mean. So it's not just drugs, it's everything. This is circle, I suppose, as well, isn't it? Yeah, I guess you're doing one for the other, aren't you? Because even when I've been to prison and I've come out clean, um, you come back to the same people, the same lifestyle, so it's hard to change your life and to do anything different. Yeah. Because you're so used to living your life a certain way. Yeah. It's difficult to change. I know, it is. Change isn't good for anyone, is no. it? How did you feel the first time that you worked? What was that like? I didn't like it. Um, I didn't even finish a guy. I remember running off from him and took his money. I started doing a bit of business and then run off. But um, obviously you can't really do that, can you? But then you just um, not blank out, I suppose. You just get um, used to doing it. I mean, it's not a good thing because when I've been attacked, and um, I've been, like, beat up and that. It's not really... When I think about it, other times it's not good how you can just come straight back out and risk your life again. But that's the power of drugs and addiction, in it? You just do. So the girl we spoke to last week, she mentioned being attacked a few times. Is that yeah. quite a common...? Yeah, I've had it a few times out here. But not so much since I've been older, because I, I get feelings, me, and if, if I don't... If I get a bad feeling about someone, I won't... You don't go there. I won't. In the past, they have done, and it usually it's gone pretty wrong when I have. Yeah. There's a car coming. Well, Would yeah. you say it's easy to pick up when someone, like, when you get a bad feeling? Or do you sometimes, think it comes I mean, obviously, experience? we can't always tell, but sometimes you can, yeah, because I've done it for, like, a long time, so, yeah, a lot of the time I can get a feeling about him. Or uh, sometimes you, you can, if you don't want to go a place where I feel comfortable to go, I don't go far, me, you see, and I always go near where I know people are going to be quite near. Yeah. Yeah. And what about relationship-wise? Does it affect your relationship? I don't think you can really have a relationship when you're on drugs and that. Mm. Because, um, I mean, a lot of it could be my insecurities, but I don't think... Well, I think if a man can let you do this as a living, I don't think he can really love you, because I couldn't let my boyfriend go out and get in women's cars and um, do sexual favours for money off and that. Yeah. So, and I don't think you can anyway. It's a very stressful life, drugs, and um, 
It's, you know what I mean? It's just, just for life and you're always arguing. I mean, I am with my partner. <laughs> yeah, terrible. But like you say, we've got a lot of insecurities, a lot of problems ourselves. So, you know what I mean? If you can't really look after yourself in them ways, it's hard to look after someone else. You can win money, but money's not everything, is it? Definitely not, no. Yeah. It's not like a healthy relationship, no. no. Have you got any kids? I've got three, yeah. Three? Do you get yeah. to see them? Not at the moment, no. Do you get to see them what? Like, what no, you seen? Um, well, two have been adopted, but my, my son, my youngest son, he's with my ex-boyfriend's family. I was seeing him a bit, but I wouldn't want to see him at the moment because I'm not in a good place myself. No. So, um, while he's settled and he's being looked after, I don't think it's fair that I come into his life one minute and then I might not go and see him again for a bit. So, at the moment, um, I'm, I just leave him where he, I know it sounds pretty selfish, but I just leave him where he is. Because at least he's looked after and he's not yeah. here. And... That must be difficult. Yeah, it you, is though. difficult. But again, it's drugs, isn't it? The sad thing is, you put drugs before anything you do. Addiction's strong. Yeah, it is very. Yeah. People don't understand that. Do you think there's anything other people could do to help more? I think people should be less judgmental and maybe um, get to understand it a bit better because there's good and bad people in all walks of life. And just because someone takes, like, I say, drugs and that, or maybe sells the body in the street, I mean, they're a bad person. They've just probably not had a, a good upbringing or whatever. I think the people can be too judgmental sometimes. People and not give quick. people a chance and maybe understand. What they're going through. Yeah. yeah. And, that it, and that it is difficult as well, once you get into it, to get out of it. And also, I mean... At least we're not going out burgling houses and robbing people, yeah. which I have done myself in the past, which I'm not proud of. At least I'm only giving my services to um, a man. I'm not going hurting anyone else. Yeah. But would you say with that addiction, that becomes sort of like the most important thing in your life? What do you mean coming like out Like you here? do anything for, to get the money I have for done it. that in the past. I have been where I've done things I'm not proud of. I've tried when I've got a bit older, because I'm on a methadone strips at the moment, so that does help me a little bit. So I have tried to not be as desperate, but in the past I have done things that I'm not really proud of, yeah. Yeah. What, um, what's it like, sort of like, prices-wise, if you don't mind me asking? Well, I uh, usually get, um, well, the £10 things, aren't they, but I usually pay 3 for 25 Yeah. It's a lot of money because you can smoke, yeah, you can smoke a house full, you know what I mean, a bush of crap, you can smoke um, endless amounts of it, so... It, I spend a lot of money every day. Well, basically, I spend every waking hour um, making money to buy what I can. Yeah. Yeah. And how much do you make from Um, It depends. Some days, about £200. Sometimes, maybe a bit more, sometimes a bit less. But I have to spend a lot of hours out here because, like I say, a lot of people are struggling in this day and age. You haven't got money out there. Yeah. And a lot of, some girls are doing it very cheap, so it's hard to compete with desperation and drugs again. Yeah. Do prices vary, then, between girls? Well, yeah. We used to stick at a price, but now they don't. Some girls do everything for a tenner. I'm not saying I haven't in the past, because I'd be a liar if I said I haven't, because I have done, but I try not to do it. But because some girls are doing everything for a tenner, or some girls don't use condoms, some guys don't care, they'll go with anyone. So mm. it's hard to... Hard to compete. Yeah, but I try not to be um, like that. Like, I, I try and use condoms now all the time, whereas in the past I didn't... I did for sex, but I never used to use condoms for oral. If I can, I try to um, be a bit more safe about my job and that now. Yeah. Yeah. What did you want to be growing up? I don't know, because I was, I was um, pretty messed up as a kid, so I don't think I really thought about anything I wanted to be or what I wanted to do. I mean, I'm pretty um, happy with my life to us. I wouldn't say I'm happy, but I'm content to a limit because this is all I've ever known to do. Yeah. And I'm on a methadone strip, I've just got my own flat, so I'm doing a bit better than I used to be. That's so good. at least I've got a couple of positives in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you see yourself, or where would you like to be in sort of like five years' time or something? Um, well, I'd like to be uh, maybe not working every god I was but like I say, I've got sort other parts of my life out to um, be able to um, manage that. Do you work every night, though? Yeah, every night. Wow. And every day. Are yeah. they out there at day yeah, as well? Yeah, 24 hours you can get clients. Wow. That must be hard. Yeah. Like, especially in winter and that when it's freezing, oh, it's freezing. cold. Oh, it's freezing, yeah. 
how does this affect your family? Well, I don't have a family, me. I got him um, abused as a child. So when I got adopted, my step um, family that adopted me, he used to um, sexually abuse me. So I, I, I used to run away in self farm and I got put into um, kids' homes. So I don't have any family, me. But I can imagine to girls that do have family, it must be very hard because I wouldn't like it if my daughter wanted to come out here and risk her life um, selling her body and um, on drugs because I know things what have happened to me. So I can imagine it must be really hard, yeah. And it must affect families a lot. Because you are risking your life every because, day. Because um, people, I suppose, are stole off the family for desperation for drugs. You know what I mean? So I suppose, yeah, it must do a lot to families. It must break families up a lot. Or maybe they have to be tough with the kids, innit? They might not want to not see them, but they might have to not see them because they're causing too much unhappiness. Or maybe they could be um, trying to get other kids in if you don't know, do you? No. Yeah, but I've got no family, me, so... Um, that doesn't really question... Um, What's the worst thing you ever done for drugs? Um, give me a body away for um, less money than, um, I, than I should have done, really, yeah. If you got any advice for anyone, what would you recommend? Um, don't get into um, drugs and try and work hard at school and get exams. Mm. And um, don't um, go out and sell your body because it, it might look, it might sound good getting money in that, but it's really not. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I well, appreciate. It. No, thank yeah. you. Is it recording? Yeah. You got your microphone on. You usually have one on. I know, but we're running out of batteries. That's part of the problem. I saved some battery if we do go out. <sighs> Thank you very much for watching Joanne's story. We're now going to talk a little bit about it. Again, I know I'll go on about it, but please do not forget to subscribe. Thank you. Joanne. Yes, Joanne. Joanne. I like Joanne. I love Joanne. She's just... I feel so sorry for her. You know? Mm -hmm. In life, like, um, she didn't have no chance. Like, you can deal with... Or some pe most people can deal with, like, one or two bad things happening to them. Yeah. She's just had nothing good. Nothing. Like, nothing. like you just said, she, she's had no... No chance. This is how you felt fail them. Completely, from the start. From the start, since she was three years old. And she doesn't go much... Like, she tells us a bit about her childhood, but she doesn't really go much no. into it. But you can, you can, literally, you can see the pain on her face. You can hear the pain through her voice. Like, it breaks my heart, like I just... want to keep her safe from all the stuff that's hurt her. And I think she has, like, a very tough exterior. Like, I know certainly the first few times that me and you spoke to her and that when we met her, yeah. she comes across very tough and very, like, don't very mess tough. with her. Yeah. And then you be. see that video and you you speak to her and you realise how vulnerable she actually is. Because when you work, when you work, in this, you work out of there, you have to have that image. Yeah, you can't. Can't People be... can't sense that you're even a little bit vulnerable, otherwise they're going to take the piss. And she's been through so much more than anyone should ever have to go through. Since she was three years old. Because it... Yeah, she went into care at three, didn't she? Yeah. And then she was adopted at five. five. But then at the end of that video she talks a little bit about the adoptive dad abusing her. So she went back into care at 11. But can you imagine that? She's been adopted. I'm all about adoption, yeah? Don't try to take someone else's kid if you're not going to treat them like your own Do you know kids. what scares me? is like, you must have to go through really rigorous checks. Yeah, yeah. And he, this person has got through them all. It's scary. Mm-hmm. Like, she she was taken from her own family... Well, taken or given up, not... She didn't really go that much into it. 
But either way, if they if they gave her up to give her a better life, yeah. the system's completely failed her. 100%. If the system took her to give her a better life, they've still completely failed her. And they're still failing her. They're still failing her now. And I think I've said this before, and I, like I'm not comparing humans to animals, yeah. but if this was a dog or something, people would be outraged. Yeah. And yet, an actual human and people are quite happy to turn, turn the other way. Because yeah. they're so busy looking down on people like Joanne. You know why people look down on people is for the self-esteem, you know, they're not happy about that. For you to put someone down, you're not happy about yourself. 100%. Because you need to feel important. I don't think it's always that, though. What do you think? I don't know. I think sometimes people just lack empathy. Like, they're like, it's not, yeah. it's not my life, it's, it's not affecting my life, yeah. therefore I don't have to worry about it, like it's nothing to do with me. But it's going to be a problem if your brother, your sister, or your mom. When it affects them, it becomes... It so she started, she basically fell into the wrong crowd. She said herself there was sort of no stability and no, like, kids need, like, routine. They yeah. need boundaries. They need to know what they can and can't push, and it it doesn't sound like she had no. any kids of that. Guidance. They need guidance. And they need love, and she didn't have any of that either. No one was there for her. No. And when you're in care, you keep changing how different houses. Mm. They're not stable. So she she started working at seventeen, and base basically she worked for I can't think of a better word for it for a pimp. Can you think of a better word? Cause I don't like that word. No. I mean, she didn't call him that, but he basically he forced forced her to work, didn't he? Yeah. Told her how much money she had to make. Can you imagine that someone told you you had to make this amount of money? And do you know what I think's even worse? Not that it can get much worse than that, but that he got her addicted to the heroin. Yeah. Knowing that it would help. It would help him. Help him, yeah. Because yeah. it would make it would for it's forcing it's another way of forcing her, isn't it? Yeah. To go out and work because now she needs to feed her habit. And his habit as well. Mhm. Mm That's one of the worst crimes you do that to someone. It's just disgusting. Like, it's another story yeah, if the girl willingly goes into it and wants... That's one, that's... I don't understand that. Like, it's just disgusting. Yeah. Like, it's disgusting. Like, it's disgusting. If you look at it from the guy's point of view, it's easy money, isn't it? He's not having to do anything. But keep a terrified 17-year-old in line, which I can imagine is not that hard. She's got no... I mean, who, who's she going to turn to? She ain't got no family. No. She can't go to her, her mum or her dad and be like, I've got myself in this situation, I don't know how to get myself out, like, I need help. That's been her life. That's She says herself that's all she's ever known. Yeah. And I think she is one of the people... One of the youngest... One of the people we've spoken to the youngest to have tried crack. Fourteen. Fourteen. That's... And she didn't... She said herself she didn't know what she was getting into. Like, she didn't know anything about the drug. No one told you that. No one told you that. I, honestly, I don't think I'd heard of crack cocaine until a couple of years ago. Seriously? You never knew about it? No. I knew about, like, weed and heroin and, like, snorting cocaine and stuff, but crack cocaine I'd never heard of. Wow. I really didn't know much about. Like, I, I've never tried drugs, but I think if I was the type of person that, like, 
did cocaine on a night out or something yeah. and someone offered me crack cocaine, I don't think I would have realised there was such a difference between the two. It's a big difference. Big difference. But that's what I'm saying, the education's not out there. Like, I wouldn't have known. Yeah. And I can imagine if you've done cocaine before and someone offers you crack cocaine and you don't know anything about it, um, I can imagine thinking, oh, well, that's not such a big jump, it's the same drug. Brendan, other people ask you, like, why would I want to know about drugs? I'm not interested. Which mean? Other people would be like, I don't want to learn about drugs because I'll never take it. I don't want. It. I don't want it. But so that's it. How can any? I guess I don't know. I was about to say, how can anyone say they'd never take them? But then I'm. I'd sit here and say I would never take them. But that doesn't mean that I wouldn't want to learn what they do to people. But that's you, though. Other people, they want not. <laughs> But then they'd be the first to be like shouting and screaming from the rooftops if like someone they knew got addicted. They'd be like screaming about the lack of education or yeah, yeah. hypocrites. So she talks about how hard it is to get out of the lifestyle and addiction. Like they almost go hand in hand. Yeah. She said she's like come out of prison before and been clean. Because, and I think this is, we've talked about this again before, about how when you come out of prison you're just thrown straight back. She's straight back into her old lifestyle and the addiction and the lifestyle come hand in hand. Yeah. She doesn't stand a chance. Not a chance. Like, think how hard, like, you, I know you've got more willpower than me and you're stronger willed. But I am, like, such a creature of habit. <laughs> I really struggle to change any part of my routine. I hate it and I can't do it. And I really struggle. <laughs> and, like, that's just normal stuff. Like, I cannot... If someone asked me to completely change my lifestyle, tomorrow, I don't think I could do it. Imagine having to leave all your friends where, you, like, what you, everything that you're used to. Well, but about John, that's her lifestyle. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. She accepted it. She, she's not happy with it, but... I don't know, she's almost... She says at the end that she's... She is almost... She's content with it. Yeah. Because it's all she's ever known. Yeah. I think from the she age of seven, 17 to... She's 45... Yeah. 44, 45 now. That... It's like, it's late and my brain's not working 28 years. Yeah, but the thing is, uh, people need to, people need to appreciate their family more, you know. Someone like Joanne made me realise like I need to appreciate my family more, my family and friends, because there's people out there that don't have no one, you know, and sometimes we do take granted of people that are around us, you know, you just have to embrace them. It, yeah, it's very easy to take for granted, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I think I feel, I don't know, like I know you feel sad about it, but I don't know if it's because I've got a daughter or because I'm a girl. Yeah, but it's so sad that she's just used to it, to 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 the job she's doing and the risks she faces every day. Like... To me, like, I don't know, like, it, it's just heartbreaking that she should have... Because, it, it, like, we need to remember she's not doing the job that she's doing because she wants to. No. She she has to do it. No one choose that lifestyle. No. No one choose that lifestyle. No one can help in the world to leave that life. Mm -hmm. And she'd been ill for a very long time. And just knowing that you could go about doing your job and she risks like getting attacked on a daily basis. She's been attacked multiple times. And there's no help out there. No. No. Like no one, the police don't really care because to them it's just 
a prostitute that's been attacked. Like, yeah. She was probably asking for it. No, in a prostitute, drug addict. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure maybe there is some place that do care, but it just like the whole system is biased against her. Yeah. Like even if she reports it to the police and she gets a good person on her case, yeah. the courts are going to look at it like drug addict. She's not reliable. Like yeah. the jury's not going to like her. Can't put her up there. It's just, and I think what shocked me is from talking to her and a lot of the other girls, is how common it is to be attacked. Yeah, there's a lot of freak out of there. I don't know, but I just didn't think it was as common as it is. Taxi driver, most customers. I know, I've witnessed. Never getting in a taxi again. <laughs> I'm not. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, I don't know what you're laughing at. I'm not. I can't believe it. Taxi drivers. It's shocking. It's shocking. And I think, like, I can't stress this enough. How ordinary most of the people look. Most of the clients look. That scares. That terrifies me. Because say you you could go on a date with someone and you've no idea that they're a person that potentially attacks prostitutes. Yeah. It terrifies me. Like you could walk past half those people on a normal day and you wouldn't... No, Not that I'm you. saying there's a look that you expect of someone who uses prostitutes. No, maybe there is. You just think of a dirty old man most of the time, don't you? But these people look normal, like normal family men. Young guys. I mean, this is a point that me and you usually always disagree in. Joanne thinks you can't... Although she has got a partner, she thinks you can't really be in a relationship with, in the line of work she does and the drug addiction. You talk about the work? Well, she says both. She contributes both to it. Well, I agree with one. Do you agree with the work? Yeah, you, you, you can't... Actually, no. You know why? <laughs> Great. I agree with that. If you, if you love someone, you should be able to let the person do what... The the one that do, not what you want them to do, right? But there's a line. There's not a line. There's not a line. If you love someone, that's what love is. If you love someone, you should be able to let them do what make them happy, right? What they like to do, not what you like them to do. That's different. There is a line, though. I love you. If you decided that you liked going out and attacking random people, my love might diminish. <laughs> yeah. so, there's a line. <laughs> there is a line. <laughs> Just... <laughs> if it became your idea of fun to start stalking people and attacking them, I don't think I could love you anymore. <laughs> there is a li- there is a line. No matter how much you enjoyed it or how much fun you had. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> Just saying. What I'm saying. And she doesn't love her work. She doesn't enjoy it. She does it because she has to. Yeah, but what I'm talking about, you're talking about love. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's my opinion. You know? To me personally, like, when you love someone, you want what's best for them. But what you think is best for them, <laughs> it might not be best. For them. That's it. Exactly, that's my point. (laughs) (laughs) You might think it's best for the person, but it's not best for him. He doesn't want that, but you think it's best for me, he doesn't want that. But it's best for him. But he doesn't want that. (laughs) But it's best for him. (laughs) Exactly, you proved my point. (laughs) I'm joking. No, you're not. (laughs) (laughs) 
Philip now. <laughs> I'm joking. No, you're not. I am. <laughs> Yeah, we'll agree to disagree on this. Joanne makes a very good point that there is good and bad people in all walks of life and she shouldn't be judged just on the drug addiction and being a prostitute. Which I think is so true and people tend to forget that. They automatically think of prostitutes and drug addicts, let alone combine the two, are bad people. But she's right, there's good and bad people in all walks of life. Yeah. We should not judge people. No. We should not judge people. We should not do that. Because I think, especially Joanne's story, yeah. you never know what someone's been through. No. no. You never know what's led them to where they are now. No. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again soon. Please do not forget to subscribe.